show. <laughs> Is there any way to prove Harambe wasn't a dog in a gorilla costume? Happy birthday, Harambe. I forgot to get you something, but what do you what could you need in your state? Do they bury Harambe? Let's let's find out. Let's find out what let's let's go to Harambe's. Can we pull that up. Let's go to Harambe's uh, wiki. They got a live feed on Harambe's gravesite. Um, it says uh. So well, here here's the deal. It, the whole thing with Harambe. This is I guess this is the uh, what? When did this happen? This happened in 1999. Okay. No 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 no. 2012 or 2016. Yeah. And how long? So how many years is that now? We're hitting an anniversary. Eight. Eight. Eight years. We're on the eight year anniversary of Harambe. Uh huh. Uh, what happened to that uh, valiant gorilla? It it. Every year it gets harder. It does get harder to move on. My cock when I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> when it's out for Harambe? Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you pull your cock out for Harambe and it's not hard, it's considered disrespect. In some countries, you can be caned for that. They'll cane you straight. They'll in give the you cane. <laughs> They'll give you <laughs> Uh, guys, welcome to the show, uh, Mike. I will. So we have a, a few things that I wanted to talk to you about on the show today. After you find out, but uh, first I want to say that uh, we I have been unable to locate Big Guy's music, <laughs> and I promise you I'll find it again. But I think this one's pretty good. I am Big Guy, and I am here today at the www dot wf dot dot fuck. He's promoting the Coliseum. website. Oh. And we're going to fight. I am going to crush 13 men in the ring. Me against 13 men. <laughs> Man, it sounds like you really got your work cut out for you, big guy. Absolutely. And, and you know, I will tell you, some people, they think that the leisure time is fun and good. But to me, leisure time is work. Work is leisure time. Work is leisure. So what do you do to relax? I work. What kind of work you do? Is it clerical stuff? Absolutely. I did my taxis. I'm an American citizen. And I, and I'll tell you what. I'm a very organized man. So you're here to, to tell people not only to put away their weights at the gym, but to do their taxes in a timely fashion. That's right. And you must be a good American citizen. Or else, at the end of the day, we'll must have to crush everyone who doesn't. Now, I heard you talking about your 13 opponents today backstage, and you said that's right. that they should be absolutely no problem for you because they're only small guys. Yes, that's right. And I'll tell you why it will not be a problem. I'm big man. 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 You're a big man or big guy? I'm big guy. I'm big guy. I'm big guy. I'm big man. I'm big guy. I'm big man. <laughs> All right, let's have an interview with uh, with one of your 13 opponents. Okay, let's do that. Hi, it's great to be here. What's going on? You you so you're fighting the great big guy. <sighs> yeah, somebody said I was trying to, to be I signed up to be a mall Santa and they said we got a better job for you and they said I was fighting a big guy. Okay, and so you don't know exactly who you're going to fight then. No, but I watched a program last week and I he, he sure is a big guy. <laughs> I guess I'm just a little nervous, but there's 12 other guys, and we're backstage coming up with a plan. And what kind of guys are we talking about are also back there with you? Uh, they're guys my size, about 5'2", 5'3", okay. 130 pounds. All right. So, and you guys, uh, you guys work out, or do you, uh, you... No, not really. Okay. I just want to see my family. <laughs> Well, I think I think it's going to be a great fight, and we can't wait to watch you guys go up against the champion, Big Guy. I have a quick question yeah. before if I do have to do do have to fight. You have to fight him. <laughs> okay. Your family is in a cage. What? A big cage. A big cage. A big cage. <laughs> Your family's in a big cage. 
Mike, I'm really excited. Uh, there, so not just because of Harambe, but I'm very excited because, and I gotta lower my excitement. I think, please, because this there might not be this might not be um a good a good time, but I think it'll be fun, and I'm excited, and I can't wait to see it. Here's so thank all you the very facts much, that everybody. Have, here's all the facts that we have so far. <laughs> You're very excited, yes. but you've got to lower your excitement because yes. this might not be a good it time. It might not what be a good be, time. Mike? What could it be? Are you fighting big guy with 12 <laughs> other guys? I, I got invited to fight big guy Yeah. with 12 other guys, and I felt like I could hide in the back. And you're very excited, but you have to lower your excitement because it might not be a good time. Because I might get hurt real bad. Yeah, uh-huh. He sounds like he has a skull-crushing move. Oh, is that so? Yeah, and he sounds like he wants you to do your taxes as well. He's coming out here with a positive message and a boatload of know-how and a skull-crushing move. Shit. Yeah. Shit. What were you prepared for? Well, I thought I could hide behind all the guys. And then by the time... Cause You're the taller of a lot of the guys. Isn't he going to be tired by the time he gets to... Uh-oh. Have you seen him? Uh-oh. He's a big guy. No, I haven't. Is that his intro music? Yeah. Uh, who, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, let me take it a sounds look. sounds like it. Let me take a look at what we're dealing with then. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, Wait. we're here backstage with Big Guy. Hey. Big guy, how are you feeling about your um, your opponents tonight? There's big guy, 13 big guy, piercing big guy, 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 big well, first of all, as they say is before, work is every day of my life. So I'm working towards every day to crush, and it is my dream to one day crush everyone in the world. Oh, so even these 30,000 people out here cheering your name, you, you're going to get to them eventually Absolutely. as well? Absolutely. The honor of my hands around their skulls and crushing, I'm big guy. I'm yeah. big guy. Uh -huh. I'm big guy. I understand big in guy. Denmark you were actually given an award for the honor of your hands. That's right, because I'll tell you, one time, this media come down to earth right in my native town of Rekvakchik. In Denmark. This meteor, it came crashing through our church. That's terrible. And the church set ablaze and everyone was scared and we did not know what to do perhaps. So how did, how did you, how'd you help the town? I went into the church and I helped the fire department take the fire down. <laughs> you fought the fire? I fought the fire. We use the fire department. You gotta and fight fire with the fire department. <laughs> what I did next, scientists are still study. Uh huh. I picked up the meteor from the ground and I said to the heavens, Where do you come from? Never come back to this place and especially never try to destroy my church. And I crushed the meteor. Ah! Girlfriend bad. Don't, don't do those things. Don't tell, don't, don't, don't make me girlfriend bad. Don't, don't, don't do those things. And some people say that as a result of me crashing the media, that I now have the ability to crash every skull on the planet. <laughs> so let me get this straight. A meteor came down 
onto your church and it set the church ablaze. And in order to help the fire department fight the fire, you picked up the meteor and you crushed it. And now you're here to tell the your fans to do their taxes. Okay, thank you for joining us. And we're very, he's doing the dance. Very helpful dance. Does it answer your question? He's got. No. <laughs> <laughs> he might be on drugs. <clears throat> Big guy might be on a lot of drugs. Okay, so can I tell you what I'm actually excited about? Finally, Mike. Uh, were you able to lower your excitement a little bit? Not yet. Okay. I think you'll help me, though. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no problem. No pressure. The new Ghostbusters movie. I saw it. You know what's crazy? It comes out today. Today. Man, that really flew onto the radar. Out of radar. fucking nowhere, yeah. There are things coming out every day. Like, uh, I think, a, didn't a trailer for Beetlejuice just yeah. come out? There's or there's images, right? image, the first images of Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice. Dude, yeah. can I tell you something real quick? So this is, yeah. the, this is one of the images that I found from the movie, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I think you'll appreciate this. It's this, yeah, yeah, which does look like Michael Keaton dressed up like the Halloween Horror Nights version of Beetlejuice. Dude, exactly. And he used to be way cooler, but I do like that it's him. I guess more hair somehow doesn't make sense. And then I put this on my story on my Instagram story, and I said, um, "When you come, but she keeps sucking." <laughs> Is that I funny? Made, I mean, I actually made a similar one. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, but I here, let me show you, dude. The memes, the when, <laughs> boo, I like pretzels. Is similar. <laughs> Kevin, I like pretzels. <laughs> that is kind of similar to the one that I put up. Yeah. <laughs> and he has a kind of like a bob haircut in yours. <laughs> yeah, fun. <laughs> he looks like the lead singer of the Cranberries in yours. How are they going to explain that this motherfucker that got old and he's a ghost? I don't think he get you don't get older. But you just he remain is, dead. Though. But yeah. he is older. And it, we will be able to tell when we watch that movie that he is older. I never saw the original Beetlejuice and thought that's like a 35-year-old ghost. Right, but I mean, like, they they want us... They're get, When we walk into those theater doors, they're giving us this pill. And it says, Beetlejuice is... <laughs> Beetlejuice, you're about to see the sequel to a Beetlejuice. Yeah, 36 movie. years later. 36 years later. Yeah. And and all the young kids are going to flip out because of how much nostalgia they have about it. Right. And they've been alive for almost half that time. Exactly. And conceivably, presumably, we're going to see Beetlejuice in this movie. <laughs> and Beetlejuice is a ghost. And ghosts don't age. Okay. They're dead. This so is where you, you're caught up. So you have to swallow the pill that, like, we don't have we we're gonna try to ignore that Michael Keaton is like 67 years old or however old he is well let me let me propose this you're going to see the Beetlejuice movie why everybody who walks into this movie yeah going to see it is seeing it why I get because they want another Beetlejuice because they saw the first Beetlejuice yeah they want another presumably more than once in the past 36 years yeah I'm gonna say 60% 60% of that movie doesn't make any sense. A lot of plot <laughs> holes in that movie. Yeah. I think Michael Keaton looking older isn't even going to register. Well, it's like, okay, here's an example. Did you see the new Indiana Jones movie, The nope. Dial of Destiny? I think you know the answer to that question. Okay, so just in case, I mean, whatever. It's on Disney+. Plus. Maybe you're flipping through things and you're like, fuck it. I'll watch the first five minutes of this fucking movie. I don't even know if I have Disney+. Plus. Shit, I gotta get you a password, brother. Yeah, please. I've been begging you for it. Uh, that movie was uh, so Harrison Ford is a, a very older guy 
now than he Is this was big guy saying when this he about made <laughs> when he made the original Indiana Jones. Yeah, uh-huh. and it's just hard to wa- to be like I love Indiana Jones because he's an action star and he's and he's like you know he's Indiana Jones. You remember him as that young guy, and here we have like another. This actually connects to the Ghostbusters thing too. I think we have another version of that movie 40 years later or whatever and at least in the indiana jones movies it's like we're seeing the aged progression of indiana jones who is still alive who's still alive beetlejuice has been a corpse for 40 years but they did do a scene where they like did an ai like weird (laughs) like where he looks like yeah you saw it Oh, wow. I'm alone in here on this one. They did that with Zac Efron and uh, Ricky Stanicki. They de-aged him, and like it looked really bizarre and weird. And then you see how old he is, and he's doing Indiana Jones stuff, and you're like, man, that's... I don't know. I don't know. I think you're holding Beetlejuice to a weird standard. You can't hold Beetlejuice to the... To the Indiana Jones standard. I'm just saying that from an outside perspective, for me, it's it's always weird and hard to accept that these these actors that played the original versions of these characters when they were young are still doing them in their fucking 60s and 70s, uh-huh. and it's hard to like see that and still suspend disbelief that they're like able to do the things that they were still able to do like in the early first movies. Beetle have this full conversation with me. Yeah. Don't deter from this conversation. Yeah, yeah, all right. Finish this conversation. Right. <laughs> Beetlejuice. Yeah. One mm-hmm. is a movie about a corpse. Right. Where the most physical thing he does is jump up onto fake grass <laughs> yeah, and touch yeah. his wiener at Gina Davis. Yeah. <laughs> I think he'll be able to pull that off. I think an older guy will still be able to look like a corpse and touch his dick. Yeah, agreed. I just think it'll be a little distracting that he is now as old as he is. It's and because you love you have an image of that character in your head. The image looks like an old piece of shit in my head. But it's still like a young guy in there. Like I just, it's to me, it's like distracting because it's like, all right, fine. You want to be sixty-five and you want to be Beetlejuice again, or you want to be seventy something and be Indiana Jones again? Like, go for it. But it's gonna be a little weird. I think that a sixty-five-year-old guy playing somebody who traverses the world and solves like international mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As an alive guy, yeah, is way weirder than yeah. Like, there's been no point in my life where I ever thought about how old the guy playing Beetlejuice was. I was like, that's an old dead guy. Yeah, I think I think I don't know. I, he's dead guy. I, he's dead. He's guy. De- he is dead guy. In other countries, Beetlejuice is called dead. It's called guy. dead guy. <laughs> you have to say dead guy three times. I think we're like in mismatched because I think I, I I'm like on the same page as you, but I think that what I'm trying to say is is that it's just from the so like it doesn't matter from the story perspective if they don't have an explanation for why Beetlejuice now looks like way older. Like I don't care. I like I'm just saying for me it's going to be a little distracting. Like does that make sense to you? I man? think right? I, I think that that's now just common. That's like, just common. Just yeah, exactly. Nowadays. Exactly. Yeah, it's just and, annoying. And with the new Ghostbusters movie, there's like Bill Murray's in it and Dan Aykroyd's in mean, it. Like, what if Beetlejuice so shows up in the Ghostbusters movie? I would die. I would fucking die, dude. <laughs> That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Because, like, you know, we have all this, like, stuff from when we were kids coming out still now while we're adults. And there's this whole kind of, like, why do they keep doing this kind of thing? Because we're not dead yet. And, and and we can go on the internet and complain about everything else. <laughs> right, exactly. But to me, I'm seeing <laughs> it more like when I was a kid and I loved this shit, like, unapologetically. Like, Ghostbusters is my favorite thing ever. Beetlejuice is my favorite thing ever. As a kid, I was like praying to like the consumerism gods to give me more of these movies and these TV shows in a timely fashion, in a timely fashion, give them to me. 
And so, and now as an adult, I, we're getting that. We're yeah. getting more of these things we loved when we were kids, and that's yes. awesome. Because people who are our age when the shit came out are now the decision makers. Yeah, and I think it's great. I, I we asked for this. We wanted more. So you got it, and you're like, but stay the same age. No, for me, it's like I'm. It, these are two different things. Like I'm excited that we're getting more things, which is where my excitement is for the Ghostbusters movie. But it's distracting to me to see these beloved characters that I, in my mind are these youthful dudes. So what do you want? What's the ideal Well, it doesn't situation? change anything. It's just an observation that's like a little weird for me. And like, you know, like Kevin said, that's just the way it is now. It's I think like, what's weird for me listening to it is that you're so into movies and can dispend, suspend your disbelief about a vast many yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Unless the people look a little bit older, and then that really takes you out of it. Well, okay, Beetlejuice is a specific case in this instance because it's like I do appreciate when you build when a movie builds a world where they obey their own rules. Which they didn't in the first movie. Well, it, it's like a cartoon. I mean, this is like a cartoon. Like, like Beetlejuice is a cartoon, right? Like, essentially, it's, like, bonkers, wacky. It's not our world. There's ghosts that are fucking with the living, and it's very obvious, and it's not It's not our world. It's a cartoon universe. But they still, like, had rules in that universe that, like, kind of made sense. Like, there is, you know, these types of ghosts and things, and they it kind of, like, made sense even within its weird, bonkers world. It, I'm going to disagree with you. There are kind of rules that are set up, but they're not, like... Go back and when was the last time you watched Beetlejuice? It's been a minute, but most I of it know doesn't it make any forward. sense. I know, yeah, it really so, doesn't. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I'm not saying it's gonna be. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying they can make another one when he's dead, and it'll still work within the universe. Like, it, like if Michael Keaton was dead. Yeah. Like they could, you mean bringing back like a weird AI version of him? Or I something? anything. I think yeah. old Michael Keaton works just as well as as younger Michael Keaton. Yeah, and in like a Beetlejuice box. Yeah, I think we're on the same page for sure because mm. I liked Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, the new Indiana. That's the new one. Yeah, I liked it. Where he, the whole mystery is he doesn't know the, his Apple password. He does, and yeah, he can't get in. <laughs> He can't find his glasses. He can't read his my chart yeah. from UCLA. Where's my no. book light? <laughs> <laughs> Did I leave it in the library? My book light. My book light. My to, book light. I need to get in this biplane to look for my book light. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's just it doesn't it doesn't change much. <laughs> like there is this weird feeling of like okay so. There was this, there was this uh, uh, late night uh, clip of like I can't remember if it was Fallon or or uh, Kimmel or whatever, but it was one of the newer guys, and he had Christopher Lloyd and oh. Michael J. Fox, yeah, on to do like a fun like Back to the Future skit or it something. Made you sad. And it made me sad, and yeah. I think we've talked about this. It yeah. made me sad because I was like, we don't. Christopher Lloyd doesn't have to be Doc Brown again. Like, that's my heart feeling uh -huh. is, like, he doesn't have to. Like, as a fan, as someone that loves it, like, as much as I would love for them to announce a new Back to the Future movie, I would be like, let's have, let's maybe do a new cast. Christopher Lloyd's still alive. Totally. But he's, like, he... he He's yeah. very old. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it, and him coming out in the costume, like, struck Marty. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man. It, like, <laughs> kills a little bit of magic yeah. in my heart of the what I know. The only reason these... they do that is to, like, make – well, not the only reason. But they – the only reason they entertain it is to make people happy. I mean, sure. It's the only reason they said yes to the movie in the first place. I think there's a money thing first. But... Well, you have to um... – <laughs> Alzheimer's medicine is very expensive. <laughs> so anyway, it doesn't, it's like, it's just kind of sad. And like, it, it, you know, for me, it would be fun if in Beetlejuice they say like, oh, it, you know, ghosts like get more gross as it's, as time yeah, like, which goes is true. on. Like in, in, sure. in a textbook, you could read that. Sure. And I, and I would buy that. If they say that, then I'm like, okay, fun. Let's, let's fuck with that. But I think it'll still be a little 
there's something inside my heart, my childhood heart, when I see like an old. I think Michael movie Keaton nerds do Beatles this years. thing where they really stack the deck against what they say they love before it even comes out, and it makes me sad to hear. Well, you see, yeah. you this conversation is you seeing Christopher Lloyd. This is like my you seeing Christopher Whoa. Lloyd on late night television. Why? Because you wrestling fans do this as well. Mm. It's they want things for so long mm. and then they read the news about how it's coming out and they really, really stack the deck and pile on about how it's going to be bad. And it's like they get in line and they can't wait to shit on the thing that they say that they've loved so much throughout their entire lives. There definitely are people that do that. I don't yeah. think I'm say I'm not doing that specifically. Like okay. I'm not saying it's going to be a bad movie. I never said that. And like I said, I liked the new Indiana Jones movie, even though it, it, it features those things that make me kind of sad. And again, it's not a deal breaker that there's like an old actor that wants to be the young character they played 40 years ago again. It's not a deal breaker. It's not something that makes me go like, oh man, this is going to suck now. But when we see it, it's like, it, it just makes me feel a little sad. That's all. And like, that's it. It doesn't make me say, this movie's a piece of shit. So you can feel it a little sad feel and little enjoy sad. the movie at the same time. Yeah. What is it? Cider House Rules? <laughs> Well, like, let's talk. So, like, Afterlife. Did you see the Ghostbusters Afterlife movie? That was the first one with Paul Rudd. Yeah. Anyway, so. in that movie, they bring back Harold Ramis as a ghost. Yeah. He died in real life. Yeah. And Egon was the character he played. And they brought him back as a ghost. And it's this, like, really emotional moment because you have the Ghostbusters that are old and still alive. Yeah. And, and they then put you their have friend a... in a toaster. <laughs> yeah. And then you have the ghost actor right there standing next to them. And it's meant to elicit an emotional response. Mm -hmm. And you're meant to be like, well, I like this movie, but here's a really sad thing now really quickly. And so it's not, it's not, it's normal for it to be like, I liked that movie, but it made me sad to see that actor playing that character at the age that they are now or seeing like a weird CG version of the dead actor was very controversial for a lot of people. Like, why would you do that? That's weird. Like, but whose decision dead. is it? It's if the it's, estate. If I you guess? go to, if you were, if you came up with a movie franchise mm -hmm. that everybody loved mm -hmm. and you died and somebody went to your mom and and was like, would he like this? And your mom would be like, my mijo would love that. Yeah. And then they did it. Would you give half a fuck if somebody was like, oh, it made me sad? Uh, Well, but the sadness could be a genuine one because the person's dead and you're seeing them again. And so you're having that weird kind of sadness. But there's also the sadness of like, oh, man, that's like weird. Like, I don't know. It's a different kind of sadness. Okay. And to me, it's like, I'm dead, so who gives a shit, right? But to people who are alive, it's understandably uncomfortable to see, like, a dead person that, like, then now they're, like, a character in the movie. And this act, and it is that actor, but they're, like, dead in real life. Like, that's a weird thing that is understandably uncomfortable, I think. And so that that's something that's just, you know, whatever. I brought it up because it's like similar in the sense that it's weird to see an older actor playing a younger character that you remember being like a young thing. It's kind of the same feeling of seeing like a dead one now doing like a scene with Sure, a but bunch I don't of think any actors. of the examples that you've brought up anyone's trying to be younger. I think they're all trying to be the older version, the aged version of that. Yeah, yeah. Or they're doing things that like that ver age of, like at that age, you shouldn't be doing that. Like what Indiana Jones is doing in the new Indiana Jones movie. Like he's climbing like mountains and shit. And I'm like, dude, no way, brother. No way. How old's the oldest person that goes to the rock chin? Uh, I climb with a gay guy, gay old man. That's I didn't ask his sexual preference. Old. 73. Yeah. 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 And listen, if the whole movie had Indiana Jones kicking it in his house and Fucking all he guys. did was climb one rock wall, I'd be like, cool. 
But he like does a, lot a of caveat. He does a ton of like shit that like if I if that was my dad, I'd be like, no way, dad. Yeah. You need to sit out. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're not going in a biplane and then jumping out and like without a parachute and like doing weird movie shit. Um, that's when it gets weird. But if that when... movie came out and he just did 60 se- if if Indiana Jones sat on a hammock and read a AARP magazine, you'd be like that movie fucking sucked. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But I will also I'm also of the of the world of like, look, I love Indiana Jones and I think that like you know, them making more Indiana Jones movies makes sense to me cuz they were like always meant to be like almost like a comic book series. And so I'm like, cool, keep me. I'm I'm of the camp that they could cast a new Indiana Jones and I would be on board with it. I think that's what they should have done. I agree. Rather than bring him back. And I so think- also like Batman movies, mm-hmm. they have the Dark Knight series where he's an old guy. And the whole thing is that he's an old guy. Yeah. So what if they brought an old Batman to play the old character? You wouldn't like that? Well, that makes sense because you're casting the age they are. Yeah. But... Yeah, he did do that in that stupid Flash movie. Yeah. That movie was real. I don't know what I'm fighting for here. I don't think there's a fight. There is <laughs> no, 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 no. There's not, there's not a fight. Fight was the wrong word. But I don't know why I'm like sticking up for... Well, I think you're sticking up for something I'm also in, agree- in, in agreement why with. Why doesn't it sound like that? Well, I think you just don't understand what I'm saying. I think, I think you're right. I think yeah. it's not <laughs> deep. It's not deep. It's literally just for me... It's it's weird, weird. an old person play a character that used to be that I remember as a young person. It's like it's weird to see Bill Murray busting ghosts for a I second in my weird. brain. For sure. As a 70 year old guy. Because I'm like, dude, just I guess as it pertains to Beetlejuice, I straight up don't understand because he's dead. That well, because it got confusing. Yeah. Well, the Beetlejuice one is different because it's like I, it's weird. It's not only will it be weird to see old Michael Keaton in Beetlejuice outfit, because there's that same feeling I got seeing super old right. Christopher Lloyd in the Doc Brown outfit it on Kimmel. To me when I watched the Hobbit movies and I saw Bilbo being super, he looked super old yeah. in the Hobbit movies, yeah. and I was like, this feels weird. Yeah, Bilbo is the the monkey that they shot because the they monkey. thought it was going to yes. eat the kid. Yeah. <laughs> um, Digs out for Bilbo. <laughs> Beetle, the original Beetlejuice is a dead guy yeah. who's missing his hair and his snake's popping <laughs> yeah, out of his he's head. Yeah, he's gross. And, and his skin is green and his teeth are yellow yeah. and shit like that. And you're like, that's like a 26-year-old guy? No, no, no. I, 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 I'm just saying that... It, it it it's I, I love think he's gonna look so more I love like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice and I love that movie as a perfect little slice of a of a thing that exists. So we got to do a sequel because we're in the sequel world and we asked for this when we were kids. We wanted more Beetlejuice, so here we are. We're getting it. So one now we're gonna watch this mo- new Beetlejuice after having this beloved one that we've watched over and over again in destroyed VHS tapes. And now we're going to see that character now as a super old man. And I'm going to be like, that's kind of uncomfortable and sad a little bit in my heart. But I'm like, whatever. If the movie's good, then fuck yeah. It doesn't make it. It's not deep. It doesn't change the movie for me. It doesn't make me feel like it's good or bad. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be weird to see old man Michael Keaton doing Beetlejuice, even if it's old Beetlejuice. And they're like, Beetlejuice got old. And I don't give a shit. Fine, sure. But it's still going to look weird after having the imprinted young Michael Keaton Beetlejuice in my head. Okay. And yeah, it doesn't change anything. It's not deep. It's just a weird feeling I have. And I know I'm going to have it today when I see the new Ghostbusters. Uh Because I'm going to be like, oh, man. Because it is a part of like being sad seeing these people you love get old. Yeah. And even in your real life, you see people that you love getting old, especially people that you've known since you were young or something. And that's always like a, a sad feeling in its own way. Does but it, it outweigh, does having the movie outweigh? Yeah, I'm curious about that. 
Like, what's the takeaway? Well, like I said, like, I'm happy that we're getting what we asked for when we were kids. I want more Ghostbusters. Like, if I had it my way, there would have been Ghostbusters movies being made, like, all throughout, like, our timeline. You know, like by now we'd have like fucking 15 Ghostbusters movies. There would have been a ghost in Lost in Translation. <laughs> there definitely would have been. Uh, so I'm all for these movies having, like everyone's like, oh, I'm so sick of Marvel movies. I'm so sick of Star Wars movies or whatever. And it's like, dude, don't you love comic books? There's like endless comic books about one character or one story or one series in this Marvel universe, in this star Wars universe. So if you love that, there's a (coughs) hundred comic books about something, why can't there be a hundred movies about something? It gave all these workers jobs and it's like keeping the entertainment industry going. And maybe out of four star Wars movies, there's one really good one. But there's people all over the world that love all the other ones for their own reasons. So for me, as a consumerist pop culture nerd, I'm like, fuck yeah, bring it on. Let's have more Ghostbusters. And of course, if the original actors are still alive, I would like to see them in the movie in some capacity. But it's just weird to see them like busting ghosts still and like. Do you understand why it's weird for me to hear all of that information in the same conversation? Because there's no, for my brain, and this is fucking my brain up, it's like if I tied my shoes halfway. Yeah. Is what's happening right now. Really? Why? Because you're like, I want this so bad. Yeah. And it's sad. Yeah. To see it. That's okay. That's life. Life can be awesome and sad at the same time. But it's not life. It's a movie. It's like a piece of entertainment. But movies mimic life, and but, it and it's okay to have that feeling of sadness and happiness. It is okay to feel whatever you want. Yeah. I just don't know. Like I can't tell if you like it or not. I like it. It just makes me kind of sad, also. <laughs> and is, is that's weird. Like, yeah. can't I say I like? Like, we you have can a, say whatever you want. We have a friend who says they really like Schindler's List. Who is that? <laughs> and. <laughs> And it's Who like, it? it's an incredible movie <laughs> uh-huh. and it's really well made. It's a dark subject matter, but it is one that I think is. What's it about? One. I haven't seen it, but it's okay to be like, I like this movie because it's a technical thing and it's a beautifully made film, Yeah. but also be like, this is a sad fucking movie though. Yeah. And it's okay to like that and feel those things. Don't you think? I, I don't know. People like sad yeah. movies. I yeah. don't get it. I, 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 you know, yeah. Sometimes you're just like, fuck it. I want to watch a sad movie. I do try to avoid a lot of like ones that are just like straight up sad. Like I don't that. get paying money to be sad. I get it if I was like on the first day of my period and I needed yeah. to cry, but I didn't have any of my own thoughts Yeah. to let me do that. But, uh, and then I get appreciating, like I like The Shining. Shining's mm-hmm. not like a fun, yeah. loving movie. Yeah. But if you told me they were recasting it with the same woman from the bathroom and she's older now, I, I'd be I'm like, out. it works. Yeah. Yeah. Like I keep thinking, I don't give a shit about movies. I and love I, them, Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I've let me finish my thought. I don't give a shit about movies. And I've heard for years that they're redoing Beetlejuice. And Beetlejuice getting older and playing dead Beetlejuice has never for a second been like, oh, it's going to be a bummer that the corpse is going to be older. Yeah. Never for a second. Yeah. Have I thought that that would impede the storyline okay. at all? I think both things are okay. Mm-hmm. You can feel like you don't give a shit. That's fine. To me, it's like I love those movies. They connect me to a time in my life that were like, that was really fun and nice and good. Yeah. And then you associate those nostalgic feelings in a way that might be more emotionally important right. to... Would- Someone who isn't and as emotionally invested. No, no, no. This is the disconnect. I'm not saying that I don't love. You that said you movie. don't give a shit about movies, though. So I, I have to. You got to hear my whole conversation, or else none of the conversation makes sense. I don't give a shit about movies in general. Beetlejuice, I watched on a taped VHS tape off of HBO ten thousand times. That's a very important movie to me and I love it very much. I don't give a shit about movies in general, but Beetlejuice is one of my I've seen it thousands of times. There is nothing about 
Michael Keaton getting older and playing an older corpse that destroys any of what I thought about sure. that movie in my yeah. childhood or that makes me less excited that he's going to be older when he films. Yeah, it. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. In fact, the the fact that you've seen it like a million times or whatever has nothing to do with it. It's just to me what I'm saying is is that there are some people that have more emotional connection then it doesn't matter how many times they've seen it. And it's not a competition. It's not like someone has a better opinion about something because they saw it more than someone else did, or they're allowed to love it more because they saw it more than someone else did. I'm saying that someone might have more of an emotional connection to it than someone else. So like very simply, some people really fucking love movies and it is emotionally and are emotionally invested in them and some people aren't it doesn't mean that one or the other has a better or has a better opinion about movies or a more That's educated opinion saying. about movies or whatever i'm just saying that if someone is more emotionally invested in something that someone else also watched a million times but they're just more emotionally invested in it then it's it makes sense for that person to feel more of an emotional connection. You keep saying it's not a competition, then you keep saying I'm more emotionally connected to it. Are you? Where are you on this? I'm Kevin? so lost, man. I'm so lost. I guess it's let's just, just do something I'm else. Not, I guess it's like all I'm trying to say is is that it's literally just like I love movies. They mean a lot to me. Great. And, and I think that you like movies. I love Beetlejuice. I love the movie Beetlejuice. That's cool. You can, that's fine. I'm not saying, I'm, let's stop using Beetlejuice as an example. <laughs> We're talking about I it. know, I know, but forget <laughs> it. Like just to summer, just to keep it as, just to put an end to it. It's just that some people, um, emotional movies that are, have, make more of an emotional impact on their lives than others. And whether that's whatever that is, it is what it is. So it's, and it is all opinion here. Like no one's like, this is it, you know, at all. So it's just that for me, I get an emotional feeling when I see old Michael Keaton playing Beetlejuice, but you don't because you're like, I just love the character. Right. You're not, that's where the bear, that's where your thought process of that ends. But I know incorrect like it doesn't have to go beyond that it's literally like i love beetlejuice i'm telling you exactly what happens with my thought process if i go see that movie and i see an older version of the actor portraying the dead guy i will i will not feel weird about that because i'm like if this movie happens 36 years afterwards the corpse is gonna decay yeah it's okay for him to look, they would have made him look different anyway. I'm saying that the story aspect of that, uh -huh. that you're talking about the story aspect of it. No, that you are, you're saying if that guy is an old guy and ghosts get old, then that in from a story perspective makes sense to me. Right. That's what you just said. Okay. So that's from the story. So that part is like, whatever. I'm just saying outside of that, I'm seeing someone that's like a family member who is getting older and it's uh, just a tiny bit sad to me to see that. That's it. It's like when you see a family member you haven't seen since you were a kid and they look so much older, but they're wearing like that same jacket they wore like fucking 40 years ago and you remember it, but it's just a little sad, but you're like, hey, age happens. Hey, I love you. I still love you. Let's have barbecue. I'm just saying I get that exact same feeling mm -hmm. seeing an old character because I associate them as like, I don't know. I escaped into those movies. So they're like my family in a way, in a weird emotional. That's why I love movies way. Mm -hmm. Is that, does that? It's weird. It's not, it's not me. <laughs> right, but it's all different opinions about like. Both of you guys make perfect sense. To yeah, me. It's, there's no disconnect. In my yeah, mind. that's what I feel. Like I feel like I understand your perspective, but I, I but you don't understand. I mine. fully understand your oh, okay. perspective. Okay, but it's I can't tell. I just don't want to. I'm out. It's literally just how much emotional investment you have in something. And whether it, it you allow it to make you feel kind of weird. If you allow it to ruin the movie for you. It will never ruin the movie Perfect. for me. Because like I said, I loved the Indiana Jones movie. Right. But it was weird to see an old 
friend. More claim. so than it was to enjoy the movie. No. Great. Yeah, yeah. no. No. But it is, it, it's just one of those things. It's like it's seeing people you love age is just a little sad. Yeah. You know, and that's just. Even the, if they're already dead. <laughs> yeah. Well, Beetlejuice is the complicated, like, I guess it's, I guess it's hard to explain that there's two different things happening. It's like, is he old in the story? Is he old in real life? And that's like two different. It's just, it's kind of sad to see people get old. That's it. Maybe it doesn't make me sad to see people get old, especially because like you can get old and be debilitated Mm -hmm. and you can get old and not have the will to do anything. I, maybe this is the, this is the disconnect. Like I see Michael Keaton in a movie where he's reprising a role that he was so good at 40 years ago. And I'm like, he fucking still has the energy to do Mm -hmm. that. He's still healthy enough to do that. That doesn't make me sad at all. Like, I'm like, yeah, good for him that like, there's so many little things like my dad is fucking in his sixties and my dad's not like in movies. My dad's not super active. Mm -hmm. My dad like had a very active, um, job where he used his, his body. He was, um, a construction guy and a maintenance guy for a long time. And now he like does puzzles and he sits on the couch. Mm -hmm. So if I see Michael Keaton in a superhero movie or fucking, Han Solo in a superhero movie. I'm like, that's so fucking awesome that they still have the will and the energy to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I do have that feeling overall. Like I, like I said, that last Indiana Jones was awesome Mm -hmm. and it was fun to see Harrison Ford be Indiana Jones again. But there's like, you know, there's just that little feeling of like, I think you just nailed it. It's like, I think it's less sad to you to see people you love get old and it's like, I'm not saying that it's the only thing I think of when I see someone who's older. Right. It might be maybe the first thing I think of when I visually see it, but then it goes away. And it's not like, it doesn't hinder the interaction or the Good. relationship. It's just like a thought I have that makes me sad for a second. And then it's like, well, that's life. Anyway, what do we do? We live. We got to keep living. You know, life is about living, not worrying about <coughs> death or whatever. Yes. So it is, it does become something where overwhelmingly I'm like, well, that's just life. And so we move on. Okay. It doesn't affect my daily life or anything. Okay. But I know I'm going to feel a little sad seeing like there's also that feeling of like this could be one of these actors last movies or something. And that's kind of like a sad feeling, too. Yeah. Um, like Christopher Walken is in the new Dune movie. Yeah. Dude, I think a part of the the Beetlejuice Thing or just movies in general is like I legit have never thought about how old Michael Keaton was the entire time in Beetlejuice because sure, same, I was yeah. too into the story. Yeah. And I think that it would be very easy for the story to be so good that I, I really wouldn't. That you get lost in that. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. Yeah. That's the whole suspension of disbelief. That's why like um all movies work or wrestling works. A good works or movie anything. does yeah. that. Uh-huh. L- allows you to accept everything you're given right. on the screen without a second thought because right. it's just done very well. Right. And yeah, like the first Beetlejuice is like, well, we don't know who these characters are. We're being introduced to these characters for the first time. So it's like, I've never thought about how old anyone is. How old was Michael Keaton during the first Beetlejuice movie? I bet he... I, Early 30s, maybe? I, maybe. Like even late 20s. Really? No, how old is he now? 60 something? So 36 years ago he was like 72 right now. He's 72 years old. Dude. <laughs> dude. But he's playing it. I don't know. We're going to keep going. Let's see how well he says it's showtime. <laughs> it's showtime. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's funny <laughs> and sad and all of these people. He was what? See, to me, like, that almost ruins the first Beetlejuice movie. Yeah. Because I'm like, no, he should, <laughs> should be, he be 40? 60. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. God. That's great. All right. Let's move on. Yeah. It's time for some ads. No, it's ad time. Isn't uh, it? Yeah. It's been ad time. <laughs> it's been. It's ad time. This has it's been. ad time. This whole time has been ad time. <laughs> Give me this box. 
It's big box. Okay, guys. Actually, this is gonna be the second one. Okay, tight. Yeah. I love this song, by the way. Thanks, man. This is this was a this is just a preview of things to come with the KO too. I've been really rocking out some stuff, and honestly, I've been a, just a little bit bashful to bring what I've been working on. But you think people see us <laughs> and they're like, "I wish they were the same age they were when they were doing Source Fest." It makes me sad that they're sitting at this table talking to each think, other. I mean, it, you know, I whatever. I think whatever you want, but I'm sure there are some people that have, maybe haven't seen us since Source Fed and look at us right now and go like, "Whoa, okay." little older and then move on i always think it's just a human i think it's a very human thing what if this whole conversation has happened between another pair of friends about you guys doing <laughs> that's so funny it's so, it's just a little sad to see people you love get old and then you move on guys let's talk well actually we got a really special thing because there is a piece of product in the studio that we are absolutely unboxing for that ad. But first, let's talk about rocket money. Good. And let's rock it to the moon with Zaman subscriptions that you forgot about or are there any that you've paid for twice and didn't even realize it yeah uh well guess what rocket money is here to save your life and more specifically save you money because rocket money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions monitors your spending and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings Lower the bills. Lower the bills. <laughs> Isn't that nice? And with Rocket Money, you have full control over all of your subscriptions and a clear view of your expenses. And that's the other thing. Rocket Money can also help you with those things as well, if you so please. Because Rocket Money does all of these wonderful things with your finances. And it's very helpful if you're the kind of person that maybe signs up for a subscription and you forget all about it, et cetera, et cetera. And Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Consider this, listeners. This is saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. So... Ladies and gentlemen, stop wasting money on things you don't use. Everyone can get in on this. You can cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash banter. That's rocketmoney.com slash banter. That's rocketmoney.com slash banter. Get around full time, it's time to have some fun. We got a podcast that's second to none. Oh, yeah, see the mic, two crazy guys talking about life. The bands is dynamic and it cuts like a knife. Get in the band to go. It's a show for the ages where the laughter's contagious and the stories will lose us. Oh, it's dynamic. Was that Who Farted? <laughs> that was Dynamic Banter. The Dynamic Banter song. Who farted? Who farted? She said. Okay, guys, and now it's time for a brand new sponsor. We have a giant running laps around the studio right now. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> you okay? <laughs> you got tired. P X G, yes. my G's. Uh, and what is P X G? Well, check this out. Golfers, this is for golfers. Mike. Yes. Mike golfs and I enjoys golf. golfing. My father enjoys golfing, and these. Uh, and I'll tell you. P X G has just the stuff that my dad would love, and Mike is opening up a box from them right now. Here's what do you hat. got there? I got this cool hat. It's perforated around the outside. It's like a futuristic trucker hat, and this is going to be so awesome. This is exactly the kind of hat you want when you're out on the links. It looks like it breathes very well. You know, golf is an interesting thing where it's like you, you got to be out there and you got to be uh, comfy, especially in the Southern California sun. But you also gotta look nice. It's a it's a collared shirt, sport, and you gotta look uh, fashionable. You gotta look nice. You gotta look tidy. But you also gotta be able to move like an athlete. Yeah, and you know what we're talking about here. We're talking about high quality, high performance golf clubs, golf apparel. Oh, bring in and how about bringing the passion that you get out there on the on the green for excellence to their new line of apparel, guys. Looks like they were just doing an old line and now they've got a new line. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah, PXG has been around for a while and they've always made really nice stuff. Whoa, that's awesome. Look at this like silk looking. Oh, that's a great shirt. Yeah, dude, this is also, their whole thing is that you can wear this on the golf course, on the fanciest golf courses in the country, and then you can keep it on. You can go to dinner with your spouse. Yeah. Or your hear. boys. That's what I needed to hear. You that's... go to either dinner with your spouse or your boys. The, and that's it. And that's it. No one else in your life would appreciate this. Dude, that this is a is really great. nice looking shirt. I'm going to wear it to church. And here's the deal. It's made with premium materials and technology designed for peak performance. And these confidence inspiring looks invite all day play, taking you seamlessly from the course to the office to, to a night on the town. <laughs> Maybe to church. If you want. From golf trips to romantic getaways, these dynamic pieces add ooh, versatility and standout style to every event. And PXG Apparel has something for everyone from pants, polos, sweaters, hats, quarter zips, joggers, jackets, skirts, everything you could want. And we got a cool hat here, Mike's sporting it yeah, with the man. PXG logo up top. Dude, and this stuff is stretchy. It's nice. Mm -hmm. You know it's going to breathe. You know you're not going to die out there in the hot, hot sun. Dude, if you came out to hang out for a drink and you were wearing that, I would be like, dude, that is stylish and nice. That Whoa, looks thank nice. you. I've been playing outside all day. Could you even tell? No, dude. Wait, you were wearing that on the green? I was wearing this on the green and off the green. So, guys, why don't you elevate your style game on and off the green with PXG Spring Summer 2024 collection head over to pxg.com slash banter and use that code banter at checkout to save 10 percent on all apparel guys listen you got someone in your life or you're very interested in this kind of stuff you want someone there's someone in your life who loves golf these are great gifts great gift ideas just check out the site go to pxg.com slash banter use that code banter to save 10 percent on apparel pxg.com slash banter code banter dude that's cool as hell I can't wait to wear this cause it is hard to find good golf clothes cause they gotta be comfy it gets so hot out there man and it's nice we got moisture wicking it's UV protectant and uh, I'm gonna be swimming in that thing so I can't wait I love that for you, Mike, and I think that's great. And I can't wait to gift my dad some of this stuff because yeah, this looks – my dad's going to love this. Guess what? His birthday's coming up. Oh, what the H? Dude, the Suno people hooked yeah. us the help. They love us. Dude, yeah, because we posted that clip. Yeah. And they reached out. Yeah, and they were like, do you want to be a part of our new alpha program? Yes, we do. And we said, as a couple of alpha boys ourselves, we'd love to be a part of the program. Uh, we are a couple of alpha uh, boys. Yes. Don't be beta around us. No, no, no. Um, Can I talk about a couple of dates I yeah, have coming up? Yeah, begging. This comes out on the 29th, right, Kevin? Yes. 
Um, from the 17th to the 22nd, I'll be at the Moon Tower Festival doing Surrounded in Austin, Texas. Yes. I can't wait about Love that. Love Austin. Wait, this comes out on the 29th. So tonight already, yeah. and tomorrow, I'm in Houston uh, with my favorite comedian, Mr. Andrew Santino. Ooh. And it's going to be an awesome, awesome trip. That's tight. Um, those shows are sold out, so you can absolutely go F off if you didn't get tickets. <laughs> um, yeah, so 17th through the 22nd of April, the Moon Tower Festival. On the 23rd of April, I'll be in New York City. On the 24th of April, I'll be at the Stress Factory in New Jersey. And that's a huge room, and I don't know a ton of people in New Jersey, so I'd love to see you there. Um, it's just me and Casey Landrigan right now, but it's going to be a really fun time. I got a lot of new stuff I'm working on and I can't wait to get some I Pete's in New Jersey on the 25th. I'll be back in New York city on the 26th. I'm doing surrounded in Shit. Bridgeport, Connecticut in black rock at park city music hall. That's going to be cool. I heard that tickets are kind of flying off the shelf for that as well. Um, and then going all the way to October, on the 9th of October, I'm going to be at the Crystal Ballroom in Somerville hey. where we did our uh, dynamic banter show. So coming back to Boston Ooh. in the fall. And then on the 10th, I'm going to be at the Bell House in Brooklyn. So I'll let you guys know when tickets are on sale for that stuff. Can't wait to be out on the road. Got to get out of the city. Um, and uh, can't wait to come see you on the road. Dude, that's tight, man. Good, yeah. good job. That's a lot. You're loaded up. Loaded up. You got the you got the whole van loaded up with weeks of travel stuff. Yeah, and I will be older. <laughs> and it'll make me a little sad. When it I will see make you a little sad during the first back. couple minutes. But then it'll never come up. It'll never. You'll never know it's that gonna I'm be, a little sad. It's gonna be so good that you'll be able to. Uh, suspend your disbelief. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, how are these new that jokes old, coming out of this old <laughs> mouth? <laughs> oh, guess what, Mike? I got a, I got a, uh, I got a plug. I got, a, I got a, guess I got a show coming up. Do it. Isn't, Do that, it. Great? Isn't that great? What kind oh. of show, Steve? <laughs> well, Matt, Rob, and I are testing out a show at the Green Room. Oh, nice in Glendale. That no, no, no. Here in Sherman Oaks. Oh, and uh, in Sherman Oaks. <laughs> That's right. In Sherman Oaks, the green room is that weed place where you can smoke weed inside that little room. Yeah. <laughs> well, Matt and I are gonna try out a show that we are tentatively calling Movie Wanna. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> where you can come watch a random bad movie, and we'll just make fun of it and laugh at it and That's have fun. Great. That sounds and great. there's audience participation and uh, we're, it's, a, it's a big experiment, but it's happening on April 26th. 6th. 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 April 26th. Tickets will be available soon. As soon as I know that I have that link, I'll post it on my socials. But hey, come on out. And if it if it's a success, maybe we could do it once a month or something. I don't know. But if you're interested in watching a movie with us and being very high, very, very high, high, because you can hotbox the F out of that room, <laughs> uh, you're going to have a real good time if you want to get cozy on a couch with me and Matt Robb on April 26th. Movie one at the Green Room in Sherman Oaks. That's great, dude. I hope you guys have a great time. Thanks, man. And uh, we will have guests and would love to have you on at some point, Mike, if you're interested. Yeah, darn. We'll I'll talk be in about Connecticut it. on the 26th, but fuck yeah. Okay. But, Dude, also, I forgot. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, get in there. Um, I forgot that the next Surrounded show in L.A. Oh, I forgot a bunch of stuff. Oh, no. The next Surrounded show in L.A. is on April 5th. So that's in like two weeks from today, yeah. from the time we're recording this. Um and we got a really great lineup um, and that's gonna be fucking awesome. And then in May, which I completely glossed over and went from April to October, <laughs> in May uh, 7th, which is a Tuesday, I'm doing two surrounded shows for the Netflix as a joke festival at the Bourbon Room in Hollywood. So a lot of stuff coming up all throughout the end of uh, March, April, May, and October. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dog. And I'm sure things will fill in between there, even between now and then. Yeah, we got to redo the list. I so. don't even know what day it is. I don't know. I, dynamic banter. Also, we start with the videos posted on Fridays now. Uh, Kevin says you guys like that. People love 
loved it. Oh, that's great. What did they say? They said, I loved it. Oh, that's how you know, dude. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. So, yeah, we've been posting the audio and video of the show on the same day now. It's a new thing. So, good. hey, I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, <laughs> I'll give you two choices. Uh huh. And Kevin, I guess you can throw a vote in here as well if you'd like, or Mike, seniority if you'd like. We can end on Harambe because it is the eight year anniversary, and it would be disrespectful for us to not even acknowledge that. Especially because we've had our dicks out the whole show. <laughs> we've been, you know, how hard it's been to be hard as a rock. Talking about old Michael Keaton for two hours. I know, because I had to think of old Susan Sarandon to stay bricked up. I had to think of young Harambe. <laughs> <laughs> or, or we could do a history road or two, a couple of quick ones. Uh-huh. I would say that. And then move on. All right, let's do it. Let's get into this. Let's I don't it. even really it? remember what happened with Harambe. I'm still keeping my dick out, you. though. Is that okay? Yeah, please. <laughs> you didn't have to paint you it up do like a, like a one minute memoriam of Harambe? We could do a one minute memoriam. Yeah, nice little... All right, all right. I like that. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. That's a good. Because maybe some people wanted us to talk about Harambe. We're joined now by our special guest, Big Guy, doing a special <laughs> yeah. memoriam. <laughs> yeah. To Harambe. Big guy, we understand that you were close with Harambe. Can you describe your relationship to the gorilla? <laughs> First of all, I'd like to do this. Yeah, two of them for Harambe. Fingers up for Harambe. I'd like to do two for Harambe. <laughs> now, the news of Harambe spread all the way to Denmark. <laughs> who's that? Who's, the guy, who's on the radio? Who's turning the things on the radio? All right, we got 30 seconds left. <clears throat> Harambe, you were born in 1999, and you went to go bye-bye bed forever at May 28th, 1921. Uh, uh, He's not great with dates. 2016. Goodbye, good night. On May 28, 2016, a three-year-old boy visiting the Cincinnati Zoo fell into the moat at the Gorilla World habitat. No, no, no clap. <laughs> I'm crushing. Witnesses said that they heard the child say he wanted to go into the Gorilla enclosure, and the boy climbed the three-foot-tall fence. Ah. No clapping. It crawled through four feet of bushes. I said no clap. And then fell 15 feet into a mud of shallow water. God gross. damn it. Gross. <laughs> kind of gross. Yeah. And it's still, you can tell you're still pretty beaten up by it. Officials immediately signaled for the gorillas in the habitat to return inside. However, after everyone else went in, Harambe, the inquisitive 440 pound male silverback gorilla, climbed down into the mud to investigate the child splashing in the water. No clapping. Harambe was killed because everyone was scared that he would rip the boy apart and crush him. Unfortunately, uh, Harambe did exhibit behaviors that were in of made the baby in inherent dangers. Because he kept going like this. That's right. Zoo officials made the decision on May 26, 2016, to kill Harambe. Today, we pull our dicks out for the gorilla in solidarity for the gorilla who did nothing. In my opinion, you can clap. Dicks out. Dicks out. Kevin has his dick out. Dicks out. Everyone's got their dick out. Everyone better have their fucking dick out. Everyone listening to this better have their dick out. Pull your goddamn dick out. I don't care where you are. If you're at work, bus stop. There's a new theme, somebody said. Really? What the fuck? 
Oh, shiver me timbers. <laughs> <laughs> right here? No, but... Oh. What? <clears throat> I didn't see that. Okay. Is that one. Okay, a certified DB classic from Josh Walker says, uh, History Road by Mo Josh. Hi, my name is Josh. Bye. This is my first time writing to the pod, but I followed you both for since I was a little younger as a subscriber. Probably. St- uh... Thank you, Josh. You, you sound older in your email. It's really yeah. throwing me off. Probably starting at the age younger than I'd like to remember listening to this. Sure. We'll say I'm 23 now. Remember the early stuff with the OG crew back in the back when day when SourceFed was the first and only channel on YouTube. So you do the math. Compared to the alternatives, it kept me with a good giggling head on my shoulders and some valuable perspectives on current events. Events is spelled E V E N C E. <laughs> Almost, but Almost. Dicks out for spelling. Jack. Uh, all right, I'm going to skip a lot of this in here and say, anyway, to the point. <laughs> Dude, always add a sentence like that if your email is long. Yes, especially broken up by a paragraph. Yeah, maybe bold it. In honor, to honor the 4,000th answer, the, to answer the call for History Road themes, I've composed a DB Diddy or an Ode to Bits and Bobs Your Uncle, a.k.a. History Rolled. I was fucked up. It was really fucked up of me to make this shit 48 seconds long. I'm working through guided meditations to try and heal from them, this mistake and learn to forgive myself. Will you keep me safe? Wow, this is a really unhinged email. I'm lost. It's very unhinged. All right, let's go. Here's a new history road from Josh Walker. Initiating history road. History Road? I thought you... <laughs> I didn't say History Road! I thought we were going down the road. I'm coming. Dear Steven Michael Evan Dips doing good and making history. Let us start the... History. <laughs> no fucking way. You know, after the email, I would have never thought the theme would sound Stop. like this. <laughs> that's what reading the email, that's what you reading the email sounded like. To yeah, me. it yeah. felt that way. I like that. I yeah, like it great. too. There was a lot of history in that. I think it's yeah. uh, I think it's a good, I think it's a very bonkers composition. Yeah, which for is sure. In the spirit of the show. <laughs> that's sure. a diagnosable. Like, he did pretty good mixing it. It's good. Yeah, I like the build up too with yeah. the original where History Road came from, like yeah. you creating the History Road name. Mike had a nice addition to add to it. <laughs> Mike did add something to it. Trombone. Dude, that... I think I smell that shit. Dude. Yeah, that's what happens after one of those. I don't think I smell anything. Something well, we got the fan going. <laughs> that's what it is, dude. He knew. I'm just gonna let he one out. This one because it was very nice. I think. <laughs> yeah, this one. I love this. Okay, this is a sweet, sweet springtime gal, uh, Kate. They And she says, hey, boys, my husband and I, but mostly my husband, have been long-time listeners. <laughs> Thank you. We're having our first and only child next month. Congratulations. And our little Goyle has heard the Dynamic Banter theme song about a million times in utero. Wow. You do put an AirPod up there? I just know husband would giggle and kick his little feet if you gave him a shout out for being an awesome soon-to-be dad. His oh. name is Ethan, and there's no way I would have made it to eight months of carrying this giant, his giant baby without his daily support. That's beautiful. Dude. That's really beautiful. Yeah, Ethan, good job, buddy. Yeah. Stay the course. Good job for coming in that lady and then sticking around and um, making sure yeah, she's on Yeah, high it. five, brother. You're yeah. bringing the human race. You're steadily guiding the human race into success. The, for- the future of the human race might be in your child's hands. Yeah. 
And you're Ethan. Stay the course. Be strong. Be there for Kate and keep doing what you're doing. Be a good husband and make, make sure when things get tough, when the baby's around, and you know it will, make sure that you're supporting as, as just supporting as you have been. The future of the human race is in your wife. Anyway, thanks for being the most entertaining buddies and always providing the laughs. Also, please, for his sake, come to Wisconsin sometime. Or Chicago? Chicago will do. And, for my sake, bring Zoya. Just okay. put a heart emoji in there. Well, stop flirting with my wife. And says, love ya. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Kate. And thank you, Ethan. Ethan? Ethan. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you, baby. Thank you, baby, one more time. Guys, <laughs> hey, what a show. Are we going to end this proper? Yes. Do you want to do your plugs one last time? Sure. I'll go real quick. On the 39th, uh, 20, on the, and thank you for joining us. On the 30th, <laughs> <laughs> on the 29th and 30th, I'm in Houston with Andrew Santino. Um, and then on the 5th of April, I'm doing Surrounded at the Hollywood Improv. One show, 945. On the 17th through the 22nd of April, I'll be at the Moon Tower Festival in Austin. On the 23rd of April, I'll be in New York City. On the 24th of April, I'll be at the Stress Factory in New Jersey. On the 25th of April, I'll be in New York City. On the 26th of April, I'll be at Surrounded in Bridgeport, Connecticut in Park City, Park City Music Hall. And then uh, on the... 7th of May. <laughs> What's a reverse uh, uh, Kool-Aid man call? <laughs> Kevin just Hawaiian punched through the door. <laughs> uh, on the 7th of May, I'm doing two surrounded shows for the Netflix is a Joke Festival at the Bourbon Room in Hollywood. Woo! On the 9th, of October, I'll be at the Crystal Ballroom in Somerville, Massachusetts, Boston. Um, and on the 10th, I'll be at the Bell House in Brooklyn, New York. Woo! That was a HeadGum Podcast.